Hello everybody, welcome to Experience Jesus with AVG, Apostle Victor James. I'm so grateful and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ for this enablement and the opportunity for us to come together regardless of our dis physical distance, you know, to be able to break the bread of life. Uh, you know, and when you and I know that the bread of life is Jesus Christ Himself, the Son of the Living God. You know, Jesus said, "Anybody that eats of this bread shall never hungry, be hungry, and then anyone who believes in Him will never thirst." You know, so Jesus is the satisfaction of all things. Praise God. The Bible said in First John and chapter one, He said, "Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son." Jesus speaking as God Almighty Himself in the body of a man. He said in John chapter 4 that God is spirit and God seeks for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul speaking about the Holy Spirit in Philippians chapter 3 in verse 3. Paul said that <coughs> believers, born again Christians, he says we are referring to believers he said we are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit and put no confidence at all in the flesh. So that is a clear witness that we are the fulfillment of the Father's desire to have spirit worshippers. Amen. Praise God. Now, before I hit the ground running, um, I want to, uh, to introduce or tell you again about my latest book. I've written quite a number of books. You know, I've written up to, I think, between 20 and 30 different books and titles. You know, um, by the grace of God, this is my latest one that just came out from the oven fresh. Uh, it's less than a week. Um, the title is um, How Jesus Did It. This book will cause a revolution in your Christian life. Believe me. It will take you in the direction that God wants you to go. Uh, I mean, it will open up your eyes of understanding and flood you with revelation. In the knowledge of our God, Jesus Christ, like never before. And the spirit of religion will be banished once and for all. So I greatly recommend this book. It's, a, uh, it's one of my best-selling books. It just came out and the rush for it is amazing. From the last time I talked about it, you know, the rush for this book is amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, a friend of mine called me you know, from far away and said to me, he said, Apostle, who will not want to read this book, How Jesus Did It? He said, who will not? He said, it's only the devil that doesn't want to read it. <laughs> I started laughing, you know. You know, so, I mean, it's, the book is packed with truth, uh, revelational knowledge of the truth. <clears throat> and I recommend it for all ministers. If you are a minister, a pastor, a bishop, an archbishop, uh, a prophet, an apostle, evangelist, a teacher of the word of God, you know, in whatever capacity, maybe uh, you are a group, men's leader, uh, you know, or, or women leader, or the leader in the choir, whatever, a counselor. It, as a matter of fact, every counselor should have this. Every counselor, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, because remember Jesus said in the book of John that the comforter who, who is the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will teach you all things. And that is literal, all things. So these are part of the things that the Holy Ghost, you know, teaches. So counselors everywhere needs to have this. If you are a born again Christian and you genuinely love Jesus, I'm not talking about, you know, just being um, passive or people that just join church. I'm talking about those who genuinely love Jesus. You know, Paul said, he said, um, uh, grace be to everyone who genuinely or sincerely loved the Lord Jesus. You know, so those are the people I'm talking to. Those of you who genuinely love Jesus, you have to have this book. It's not because I'm trying to sell it. Of course, I'm, it's for sale. It's not free. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm speaking genuinely from passion. You know, from my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, as an experience and revelation knowledge he has given to me. Not controversial revelation. I mean, pure, direct knowledge of Jesus and what he has done. The realities of our redemption. So if you are a minister, 
you got to have this book. Otherwise, I don't know what you are preaching. I'm telling you, I'm sorry to say. You know? So, as a minister, as a servant of God, it is important you have this book. It's going to help you. You know, to help. Uh, I say that with all humility. There's no pride in it. There's no, no, sen no need for, no sense of pride or something. You know, it's from a heart of humility. And if you're a born-again Christian, you got to have this book and read it. Um, so if you want this book, just send me a WhatsApp message and then we'll try and get it across to you as soon as possible. Uh, WhatsApp message, my, my WhatsApp number is uh, plus 234-803-071-8006. You know, another man of God sent me a message. He said, sir, you know, uh, it's from abroad, not in Nigeria here, from overseas. You know, the, the man of God sent me a message. He said, this book will, you know, cause offense against the spirit of religion. You know, the spirit of, uh, uh, you have to use this, you have to take that, you have, you know, all of that. You know, this book, I'm telling you, even if you are, if you, if you have a Bible school, you know, a Bible school, you, you got to have this as part of the curriculum or the textbook for the Bible school. Because I don't understand why there should be Bible school and then we don't teach about what Jesus has done for us. You know, so I, I greatly recommend it. And the book is forwarded by Bishop Mike Okonkwo. You know, it's forward. The forward is by Bishop Mike Okonkwo. So, I mean, for, for that great man of God, a pick track like that, to forward this kind of a book, I mean, you must know that uh, there must be something to this book. <laughs> because his integrity is at stake. I'm telling you. So, uh, you know, uh, he, he's gone through it, so I know what I'm talking about. You know, So get it. Send a message to WhatsApp, my WhatsApp number, plus 234-803-071-8006. You know, and as soon as you do that, we'll get the book across to you. Uh, you know, it's very, well, very cheap. It's not expensive. You know, even those of you in America, Canada, uh, Australia, Dubai, Qatar, uh, Kenya, South Africa, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Namibia, Ghana. I mean, I've been getting, we've been getting orders from all those countries. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. This book is flying, I'm telling you, and it's flying very fast. Praise God. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. As by the Holy Ghost, I ask that this book fly all over the world and bring revelation and knowledge to the heart of every genuine seeker of the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and of his finished work. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. All right. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go to my YouTube when we're done. You know, go to my YouTube channel. You know, it's Apostle Victor James in YouTube, and then you can press the subscription button. We have loads of teaching there that will be a blessing to you, both you and your family and loved ones. So you can introduce you to others as well. Amen. I love you and God bless you in Jesus' name. All right. Having said that, let's hit the ground running. Um, and let's break the bread of life together. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We're going to start off with Romans and chapter number 5. And um, verse 1. The book of Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, Daddy, please put it up. Romans 5. Verse 1. Very important. I need you to see this. Glory be to God. Romans 5 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, just reading that alone is enough. I mean, we can just read what we have just read now and, and say, let's let's share grace in fellowship. Let's close. <laughs> Let's close the fellowship right now. You know? He said, being justified. The word justified means to live as though you have never committed an offense. So the Bible said, we are living as though we have never committed one single offense before. Before God, by faith. Not by any act. Not by anything. By faith. Glory be to God. But that's not where I'm going. 
He said we have peace with God. Because we are justified by faith, he said we have peace with God. Oh, glory be to God. I have peace with God. I have the God peace in me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I have peace with God. You and God, as a born-again Christian, are not in any fracas. You are not in any quarrel. You are not in any fight. There is no fight. There is no quarrel. There is no animosity between you and God. It can never happen. Never. He was wounded. Jesus was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was placed upon him. That's what Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 in verse 5. Now, after Jesus had done all of that, Isaiah, in continuation of the Father's mind regarding what Jesus will do for mankind, and, uh, uh, and, and that will be a, a manifested life experience for those who will believe in Jesus, Isaiah continued in Isaiah 54. Glory be to God. In Isaiah 54, verse 10. Please put Isaiah 54, verse 10. Remember, after Isaiah had prophesied that he, Jesus was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace. What will not make us have peace? The punishment for our mistake that will not make us have peace has been, has been punished on Jesus. So those punishments or consequences are no more available. Glory be to God. The Bible said, therefore, we have peace with God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at it. Isaiah 54 in verse 10. He said, for the mountain shall depart and the hills shall be removed. Let's start from verse 9. You know, back off to verse 9, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. He said, for this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn at the waters of Noah, should, uh, 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 that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. You know, after the experience in Genesis about Noah and then the flood and all that, God said, God swore that he would never use water to destroy the earth anymore. You know? So after Jesus has come now and paid the price for the chastisement of our peace, anything that will not allow you and I to have peace, God has punished the thing on Jesus. Glory be to God. And make where? Whatever your condition or challenge, whatever your circumstance in life right now, my question is, are you born again? Do you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If the answer is yes, whatever will not make you have peace or enjoy peace, even if it's your own deliberate mistake, God has punished it on Jesus on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. So, after God had punished all of that, the chastisement of our peace on Jesus, the Bible said, God said, I now swear. God is swearing. God said, I swear. Just the same way I swore in the time of Noah that I will not use water to destroy the earth again. He said, also, oh, also, I swear now. He said, so have I, look at it. Let me use this thing. He said, so have I sworn that I will not be angry, rough with thee not rebuke thee. God said, anybody who is born again, I swear, I will never be angry with anybody who believes in Jesus Christ. Ayya! He said, anybody who accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, God said, I swear, I will never be angry with you, nor rebuke you. You know, when you hear some minister preach and then out of zeal excitement but ignorant of the truth you know say god the lord rebuked me and said you know and said xyz to me you know he's just speaking from his mind or paul calls in colossians chapter 2 his fleshly mind he is not speaking from the spirit of god because the spirit of god is the one that inspired the scripture so the spirit of god will never minister speak say anything to anybody that is not in line consistent with the truth of the scripture are you seeing it god said i swear ah god has sworn 
that he will never be angry with a born again Christian. <laughs> that will knock off any religion anyway. I'm telling you. It will set religious spirit on fire. Right now, a lot of religious people listening to me, they are angry. And sir, what, what of if, if, if the born again is doing, what, what of it? You know, some people, their conscience is filled with evil conscience. It's powered by evil. That's why the conscience they have, according to the book of Hebrew, is called evil conscience. Anytime they think, they must think about evil. So evil, <clears throat> the knowledge of evil, <clears throat> excuse me, has taken the center stage of their thought, of their thinking pattern. So their, their conscience, according to the Bible, is evil powered. No matter how you teach them the truth, they will still say, uh, okay, what, what, of, what of somebody that is committing this kind of sin? Uh, is that one? Will God not be angry with that? You see, his conscience is evil powered. He needs to be helped. And that's why this teaching is coming. To help you be, to become delivered from an evil conscience. Glory be to God. One of these days, if the Holy Ghost permits me, in Jesus' name, we will do fellowship and break the bread on uh, uh, freedom from evil conscience. Are you seeing that? All right. God has said, God has sworn, I will never be angry with you. I will never be angry nor rebuke thee. Anyone who accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, God can never be angry with you. I'm telling you. Because what will make God angry with you, God has vexed all of it on Jesus Christ. So accepting Jesus has exempted you and I from ever qualifying, no matter what happened, from God's anger. Woo! Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible said that through him we've been delivered from the wrath to come. God's anger to come. You know, we've, we, are, we are delivered from it. All right. So, we have peace with God and we have the peace of God. Go back to that Romans chapter 5 in verse 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you getting this? Thank you, precious Father. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Go back into it again. Let, let's, let's look at it together. The Bible said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Look at our peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! Our peace with God is through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, what we need to know to keep living a peaceful life with God and in God is the knowledge of Jesus. We have peace through our Lord. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to know the more of Jesus we know, the more of God's peace we will enjoy. Woo! Glory be to God. I thought somebody heard that. The more of Jesus we know, the more of God's peace we will enjoy. Let me show you something real quick. God punish the devil. In 2 Peter chapter 2, I mean chapter 1, verse 2. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 2. Please put it up. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. So remember, the Bible said now we have peace with God. But this peace is powered by Jesus. Through Jesus. So if we want to grow or live in a greater walk, W-A-L-K of our peace with God we need to know more about Jesus. Let's see whether that is true. The Bible said in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 2, it said grace and peace. Are you seeing it now? Grace and peace be multiplied increased unto you through the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus. So the more of Jesus you come into knowledge the more of Je the knowledge of Jesus that you come into, the greater your walk of peace with God. Thank you, precious Father. You know, a lot of, a lot of Christians are living a peaceless life, even though they still have peace with God. They are living a 
peaceless life. But their peace with God is intact. But because they do not have knowledge, because they are ignorant, they are not enjoying their peace with God. They are living with a steady heart of condemnation. A steady mind who doubts, who disbelieves, who is not established, steady, consistent, but double-minded at all points. You see, the devil does not care. Well, the devil, honestly speaking, the devil doesn't care if you shout in prayer or you don't shout. He doesn't care whether you dance during praise and worship or you don't dance. I'm telling you, the devil does not care about all of that. What the devil cares about and he does not want you to come into is the knowledge of the truth. That's why the Bible said, this is good and acceptable unto God that all men should be saved. And after they are saved, they should come to the knowledge of the truth. God does not want you to be saved and go and start doing religious activities. The devil will come. Jesus said, when a man heareth the word and understandeth it not, he said, then commit the wicked. So when he hears the word of God, the teaching of the word, like we are doing now, and you understand, it keeps the wicked away from you. Because you are armed against him. The knowledge that you have of the truth, and remember that the truth is Jesus Christ. So the knowledge of Jesus you have keeps the wicked one away. But Jesus said, when a man heareth the word of God and understands not, he said, then come at the wicked. The wicked, the devil, will come for that person. Whether he's born again or not. Whether he speaks in tongues or not. Whether he prays 10 hour prayer or not. You know, if you hear some people glorify prayer, you know, I have never seen a nation of Christians where they pray like Nigeria. Yet, majority of our prayer warriors are frustrated people. They are the most miserable. Apostle James, is it not good to pray? What are you talking about? I pray a lot. I pray in the spirit all the time. As, long, uh, as, much, uh, as much as I'm able to, by the help of the Holy Ghost, giving me all trance. You see, but when when you now, somebody, somebody said one time, one man of God said one time, he said, prayer is the key. How can prayer be the key? When James says you can pray and pray and miss, because you want to consume the result upon your loss. Are you seeing it? So it is possible to pray and pray and miss. But when you go for the knowledge of Jesus, you cannot go and miss. Aya. He said, come to me, all you that labor. And a heavy lady. He said, and I will give you rest. The day you meet with Jesus in true knowledge, it will be expressed in the dimension of the depth of rest that you have in the face of your conditions or challenges. Thank you, precious Father. So, the more of the knowledge of Jesus you have, the greater your walk in peace with God. You just relax. You are not, you are not under pressure to perform. You are not under pressure to do things, to kneel down, roll on the floor, cry, shout, do night vigil or do fasting before God will hear you. By faith, you have peace with God. Because that faith we have exercised in Jesus Christ. And this Jesus, the chastisement of our peace has been flogged, punished on him. I think you should put that Isaiah 53 verse, verse 5 so that everybody can see. This is very important. Very important. I have peace with God. Anytime I want to ask God for something, I don't start begging him. I have peace with God. Yay, Jesus, have mercy on me. I have peace with God. It, no matter how I wake up in, on the bed, whether on the right side or on the left side of the bed, I have peace with God. Woo! Look at it. But Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement, the chastisement, the punishment, for our having peace with God has been punished on Jesus. So there is nothing that can ever provoke God against my peace with him. Nothing. If there is anything that can make God angry with me, that thing must be greater than Jesus. 
And God forbid, nothing is greater than Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the beginning and the end. <laughs> Introducing himself, he said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is nothing that can ever be greater than Jesus. Nothing. So whatever it is on my side or your side as a human that will not make God listen, that will not let God allow the peace that you have with him to keep flowing, you know, that thing has been punished on Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Precious Father. I think right there, somebody needs to say thank you, Father. Let's just give him thanks. You know, with this understanding, give him thanks. Thank you, precious Father. Abba, Abba Father. You strategically planned it that I will never, so that I will never be able to offend you. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking my place. Jesus offered himself to collect all the punishment so that I can be a beneficiary Woo! of his sacrifice. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even in your mistake, there is peace between you and God because he's going to help you out. He will help you until you receive strength to be able to come out of those mistakes. That's how beautiful this thing is. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, as a born-again Christian, in Romans chapter 14, verse 19, NIV translation, Daddy, Romans chapter 14, verse 19, Look at what the Bible says. I, I hope my microphone is working well. You know, Proverbs chapter. Uh, you, you can, let's ask if, if you are hearing me very well. Please uh, just sign. Huh? Good. Good. All right. Good. Okay. All right. So watch this. Romans chapter fourteen, verse nineteen. So then, let us aim for harmony. No NIV. 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 I, I like it in NIV. I, I, I think I like it in NIV. It's very important. Okay? Watch this. And I, oh, glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, precious Father. Let us therefore make every effort. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. God said, because you have peace, you and I have peace with God. Now, in our relationship on earth, in this world, with one another, God said we should do everything, every, everything uh, with, with, with all the ability he put in us, you know, to go for peace with each other, to live in peace with each other. Don't replace prayer with making effort to live in peace. It is a big error. People who trust their lives only on prayer and not on the counsel of God, they make a shipwreck of their faith. Thank you, precious Father. Do not trust your life on prayer in the absence of pursuing after peace. Making every effort to live in peace. Why do you want, you know, a lot of Christians, a lot of people think that to be born again is that you are called to war and to suspect everybody. Everybody is your enemy. Everybody you must fight with. Everybody you must quarrel with. That's why there are so many marriage scattering. Because nobody wants to, so the other, the woman does not want to submit. The man does not want to love. Nobody is pursuing going for peace. But look at what the Bible said. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace. He said, and in mutual edification. God said, it's your responsibility. God is not going to do that for, for you. He's not going to do that for me. If you are having bad relationship, if, no, if, if, if people come around you and they leave, if people come around you and they get offended, if people come around you and they get irritated, you should do, take every effort within you to work, to work on yourself in 
living a peaceful life with others. You know, it's like a woman, a lady, she's never been married, and she's 40 years old, and then she talks arrogantly, boastfully, talks anyhow, randomly, and then when they say, why are you talking like this? Calm down. He said, no, this is who I am. Uh, nobody can change me. This is who I am. Who told you that's who you are? That's not who you are. That's not you, who you are. You were, you were poorly trained. You were badly brought up. Because when a baby is born, the baby is not, is, didn't come into this world with any concept. The baby's mind is free, empty. So it's as the baby grows, the relationship, the associations, the environment, the education, that the baby gets, all the information coming into the baby's mind is what the baby takes and holds, walk on to become a character. So if you have been filled with the wrong informations that has translated into wrong character, you need to work on yourself. God is not going to do that for you. You got to work on yourself. Look, divorce is not the solution to life. I have seen people who divorce. Marry the second person, divorce. Marry the third person, divorce. Marry the fourth person, divorce. You see, the same effort, the same willpower it will take you to remarry, to, to divorce and remarry. The same effort, the same willpower it will take you to make this your present marriage work. Except in the case where there is extreme violence. That's when we say, look, you got to go. You got to hit the road. You need to get out of that relationship. But in the absence of extreme violence or violence, divorce is not the, it's not the solution. I'm telling you. I made up my mind. You know, I will never divorce. No matter what happened. Before I even got married, that was my mind. And then I told my wife, I said, look, this thing we're going, you know, we're going to go into. There will be no, anything can happen. We can quarrel, have misunderstanding, do this and do that, you know, for whatever the thing is. It doesn't matter. The only button we will never press is divorce. We don't press no divorce button, you know. And of course, God has kept us over 30 years. Now, don't pride yourself in things that makes for offense to others. Work on yourself. The Bible said you should do every effort, take every effort to do what leads to peace. Go after peace. Pursue peace. As a matter of fact, put ESV translation in this thing. Let's see what it says. Because I, I didn't check it, but let's, I'm sure it will have uh, um, it will have a, 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 you know, an interesting translation there. Quickly, please, Daddy. Here's the translation. The Bible said, so then let us pursue. I said it. You see, are, are you seeing it now? He said, let us pursue what makes for peace. Pursue what makes, look, a lot of people are trying to pray for their husband. I know a lot of women that are going from one prayer meeting to the other. My husband needs to be, my husband, my husband, my husband, is my husband, my husband. Look, you can with peace eh, conquer your husband. You can with peace win over your wife. It's like two people that, <clears throat> that are trying to fight. One person wants to fight, but the other one doesn't want to fight. After a while, the one that wants to fight will see that the fight is no longer interesting. That's what peace does. So be the peacemaker. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, he said, blessed are the peacemakers. He said, for they shall be called the sons of God. People who exhibit peace, pursue after peace, go out of their way to make for peace. Jesus said they are the true sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Very happy. The word blessed there means happy. Happy are the peacemakers. Happy. Those who make peace are happy people. Very happy people. Blessed people. Fortunate people. Not people who think that 
They have to go to war. Can you find that in Matthew chapter 6 or, or there about? Is it chapter 6 or chapter 5? You know, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. They will be called the sons. They say, This is a child. Ah, this one is a child of God. This one is a daughter, the daughter of God. This one is the son of God. Ah, are you seeing it? Peacemaker, people who pursue, who deliberately, consciously make up their mind because they have peace with God and they have the peace of God in them. Go after peace. So the Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. They make it. You, you see, peace between you and I cannot just happen. Somebody has to make it. Somebody has to be the maker. Woo! So Jesus said, every maker of peace in relationship woo, is blessed. Another word, another meaning, definition for the word bless here means to be positioned for advantage. Makers of peace, peacemakers, are positioned for advantage. Things, uh, uh, things will eventually work together for their good. Are you seeing that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Why should you be fighting and quarreling with everybody? You know? And then when they tell you, calm down, you say, no, I know my God. Is the God that can send fire, that can do it by fire by force. I know my God, the God of Elijah, the God that answered by fire. When I call him, fire will come down. You know, I may ask, I'm, ask them, how many of them have seen fire come down since? None. They've not seen, till now, they've not seen fire come down. Fire ain't coming down nowhere. And they are so disappointed because God is looking at them. They are just, they are just a bunch of waste of time, man. In their relationship, in their the Bible said he that troubles his family, his house, he will inherit the wind. If you trouble your family, if you trouble the church God has put you, if you trouble the association God has brought you, he said you will inherit the wind. You will inherit the wind. When trouble comes, when challenges come, you will have nobody to stand with you. You have nobody to stand with you. When will you? <clears throat> I think I need to, you know, in this place, come into, you know, the families of men of God, pastors, women of God. If your wife is a pastor, why don't you, for goodness sake, support your wife? Help your wife. Be the one who will make the peace to help her to succeed. If your husband is a pastor, a man of God, why don't you become a woman who will become the peacemaker the one who makes peace for him to succeed don't be the knife against your husband don't be the trouble look look the man you are married to the woman you are married to you are the only one that knows their weakness your spouse deepest weakness your spouse snore, whether your wife snores at night on the bed, nobody else knows except you. You see what I'm saying? Your husband snores, nobody knows but you. You see, don't begin to deal with your wife or your husband because you have seen finish. You know, like we used to say in Nigeria, you don't see me finish. You know, you have seen everything. So what else again? Don't do that. There are so many people <clears throat> who are believing God to replace you in that marriage, in that family. Your parents are good. They've labored all their life. They've worked hard. They've made provisions for you. There are people who are believing, praying to God to put them in such families. If you trouble your family, your household, the Bible said, you will inherit the wind. Be a peacemaker. Be a maker of peace. He said, I'm going to show you something before we go on. To live in peace is a calling. It's a calling. Woo! Glory be to God. You, you see, prayer is not a calling. No, prayer is not a calling. Nobody is called to come and pray. There's no, there's no scripture like that. Go and check it in the New Testament. There's no scripture. Say, the Lord has called me to prayer. There's no scripture for it. Say, the Lord has called us to prayer. There's no scripture for it. 
But we are encouraged to pray. Because prayer <clears throat> is more or less in three dimensions. The first one is that through prayer we do fellowship with God, which is very beautiful. You know, where we draw strength. Through prayer, we edify ourselves. Through prayer, we keep the enemies at bay. Are you seeing that? So there are two, three dimensions to prayer. But to live in peace is a calling. <laughs> to live in peace is a calling. Mrs. Pastor, to live in peace is a calling. My dear pastor's wife, to live in peace is a calling. <clears throat> Mr. Pastor, or should I say, because how else should I address you? Mr. Apostle or Mr. Bishop, Mr. Prophet, to live in peace is a calling. Everybody who has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, everyone, including myself, we are called to live in peace. You see, we have peace with God. And we have the peace of God. So what is the peace of God? The peace of God is not a thing. The peace of God is a person. And his name is Jesus. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Ephesians 2 14. He said, Jesus is our peace. Come on now. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Look at the Bible. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Because why do you want to set your house on fire? Why do you want to set your business on fire? Why do you want to set a, a, the church on fire, the church of God, that you were planted? That church has stood with you for years. They've helped you. The church, the pastor, has helped to pay your house rent, pay your school fees, giving you transport money. Now something small has happened. A misunderstanding has taken place. So <clears throat> they say your pastor has done something wrong. You cannot, for the sake of Jesus volunteer yourself to be the peacemaker in that place. Ah! You have not understood your calling here to be a Christian. That's the meaning. You are yet to understand why you were called to be a Christian. Watch this. For he, Jesus, is our peace. You see, we have peace with God and we have the peace of God. Jesus is our peace with God and he's our own peace. So the peace of God that we have, God wants us by all means as his ambassador to let it flow through us as peacemaker. Two people are quarreling. You have gone to join with the other one to separate them. You are supposed to be a peacemaker. You are supposed to be a peacemaker. You should never leave a place without them knowing that you came there to add peace to that place. Otherwise, you are not a child of God. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Put, put it back up. That's uh, uh, Matthew. The book of Matthew. Put it back up for me, please. I want everybody to see that. I didn't say it. That's what the scripture says. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. So the way we know the sons of God in a place, you know, all of us, everybody might be there. How we know a son, a child of God is there, is that it will bring peace into that place. It will bring peace there. Stop backbiting. Stop it. Stop this bitterness, jealousy, envy. Why? Some people are always wishing that somebody should come down for, you know, lose their position so that they can be promoted. This car is too big for any one person. Look, <laughs> the Bible said in Romans chapter 10 that the Lord, the same Lord is rich over all. He's not expecting that one person should fall so that you can rise. No. He, Jesus has enough grace for all of us to rise side by side in whatever capacity he has called us. You should be a peacemaker anywhere, wherever you are working, whatever the company, whatever the office that God has given you opportunity to be employed and you are working there. They should know you as a child of God there by the peace you brought, not by speaking in tongues, not by 
lunch hour, you gather everybody. Oh yeah, let's pray. Intercessor. Who made you an intercessor? Without making peace. You are fighting and quarreling with everybody. You are gossiping and carrying tales about people. You know, the Bible says when you cast out a tail bearer, he said all strife will cease. Not drive out the send the person carrying tails about, send the person away. He said all strife will cease. There will be no strife in that place anymore. Sons of God are known, daughters of God are known in a place because they will bring peace there. Glory be to God. Why? Peace is a calling to, 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 to live in peace, to carry peace into everywhere we go. It's a calling. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a calling. Everyone who is born again is called into that ministry of peace bringer. To bring peace. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Glory be to God. Let me show you. God punished the devil a billion times. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. Hey, see Bible. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm just getting to half of my teaching. This thing is serious, man. Hey, get label. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15, he said, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God, had called us to peace. You see, it's a calling. To live in peace is a calling. Yay. Yay. Believers need to hear this. Christians all over the world need to hear this. Prayer warriors need to hear this. Um, spiritual fighters. You know, you need to hear this. God called us to peace. You should, a, Mr. Prophet, Mrs. Prophet, the calling of God for you is to bring peace. Don't use prophecy to divide husband and wife. Don't use prophecy to scatter families. Don't use prophecy to divide or scatter friends. You are not called for that. It's not a calling. Anywhere a prophet should enter, that place should not be scattered. That family should be gathered. But when you meet this evil prophet, these ungodly men and women that call themselves prophets, these uh, uh, um, soothsayers, these men and women who are under familiar spirit, any, go and check their footprint in any family, in any organization, in any house, in any business. You know, they scatter people. Your mother is a witch. Did you see, I don't know whether some of you saw on the news, just this week, a young lady a young lady took matches and went after her mother and matched the mother to death. So the Nigerian police just arrested her, brought her as I was watching the news. Look at this beautiful young girl. What, what? They asked, publicly they asked her, why did you have to match your own mother? Why did you have to kill your mother? He said, uh, the prophet, the pastor, in our church is a prophet. When she went for counseling, the prophet said the mother is a witch. That she's the one behind his case. I mean her case. So that's why she now said, he said unless you know something is done about the mother, she can't progress. Look at madness. I said, you people don't just arrest this girl alone. No, no, don't just arrest this lady alone. No. Go after the prophet. Go after the pastor. That pastor should be sentenced to life imprisonment. Because he should be charged with second degree murder. While this one is charged with first degree murder, the pastor should be charged with second degree murder. He should go for life, life jail. Some of these prophets or these pastors should be arrested. Yes. They should be, as a matter of fact, they should be locked up somewhere and the key thrown away. They should throw the key away. No man, nobody is called by God as a man of God to divide families. I don't care if the mother is a witch. If God said to you that the mother of the girl is a witch, tell the girl to invite the mother to come and see you. That's why you are a man of God. Pray for her and cast out that witchcraft. Lead her to Christ. Oh, Yagabada. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Not the ministry of telling people to machete their mother to death. Abba. What, what is going on? 
To live in peace is a calling for every born again Christian. You must live. If you are not living in peace with the people around you, in your compound, in your family, with your husband, with your wife, you are, if you are born again, you are the most ignorant Christian. You don't understand Christianity yet. It's a calling. And because it's a calling, God made, made for us to be able to live or express peace effortlessly. You know what God did? He made peace the fruit of the Spirit to us. So peace is a fruit of the Spirit to born again Christian. In Galatians chapter 5. Thank you precious Father. Hey, you see Bible. I love to preach about Jesus. It is doing me as if I smoke something. In Galatians 5, 22. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Please, if you are a pastor, play this message for your wife. I beg you, in the name of Jesus. If you are a pastor's wife, play this message for your husband. If you are not a pastor, play your, this teaching for your husband. If you are, if your wife, whatever it is, play your, this, this is for your wife. Look, play for your children. I'm begging you. Because God, the Holy Ghost is using me in the name of Jesus to call people out of bitterness, out of hatred, out of envy, jealousy, negativity. All this too much negative energy flying about. That's what the devil is riding on to penetrate families, to penetrate individuals, to penetrate businesses. But in the name of Jesus Christ, we cast him out in Jesus' name. As the glorious light of the gospel comes, I believe in Jesus' name that even you, you are receiving freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Be a peacemaker. Be the worker of peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at it. But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that the Spirit of a born-again Christian generates, produces, is love, peace, is love, joy, peace. So, God, for us to be able to live in peace, effortlessly at all times. He made our spirit a peace producing spirit as a fruit. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you precious Father. So no matter the condition no matter where you find yourself, no matter what is going on in your marriage, in your family, in your job, in your society, in your compound, on your street, the community where you live, no matter what is going on, you should be a peacemaker. You should be the reason peace is reigning there. And sir, you know, the trouble in this area is too much. You, you don't understand. This, my husband, is too bad. You, you know, look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. There is nobody that is uh, so bad that when the person experiences peace, they will not respond. Stop being a nagging wife. Nag your husband. Nag, nag, nag. The same man you are saying is a bad man. He's not a good man. He's not a good man. Somebody else is eyeing him, believing God that you should pack your things and leave so that she, she can come in. The same thing with the woman. The same woman, you are saying, this woman is bad, this woman is bad. Another man is eyeing her. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Please. To live in peace is a calling. Is a calling. We are called to it. So regardless of the condition, be the one who is living in the flow of peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When somebody insults you, why don't you, with smile, say, what have I done now? Don't do, what, what, what did I do? What, 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 what is it? There can't be two captains in a ship. That ship will drown. As a matter of fact, let me tell you the truth, between uh, husband and wife, between couples. Look, <laughs> because I have experience in that area. No matter how foolish your husband is, yeah, and because women are very smart, they're very intelligent. And you know that this man, the decision he's about to make or he's making is going to lead the family into, you know, an expensive error. Do not present your, you know, 
your, so your opinion. Don't present it as an authority. Present it as a suggestion. Men loves people, anybody who presents anything in respect to him. Even though he's foolish, present that thing to him in respect. And you will see the way he will turn with smile. He will turn to a boy, a baby boy to you. You know? And he will take that thing. But once you begin to present your case, your point, authoritatively, demanding, or demandingly, so quote and unquote, once you start doing that, you will remind him of his mother. Every male child wants to escape the authority of his mother. Go and check. Every male. That's why no man wants to marry a, another woman that is his mother. No man wants that. Once you understand that, just make for peace. Live in peace. Live in peace. So that's why you see that when a woman wants to bring suggestion and say, look, uh, this is a, uh, the man will stand up, you know, in defense. He's not ready to compromise anymore. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Because there is an instinct in man that wants, that he loves the mother, but that instinct in man hates the mother's, you know, um, overbearing authority over him. So as he's getting married, or as he's looking for a woman to marry, he's looking for a woman that will not, quote and unquote, be his mother. If you understand what I mean. This is the truth. The Bible said, look, God has called us to peace. Not to war. And do you know, in, in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, quickly please, Colossians 3, 15, look at what the Bible says. In, put ESV translation. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. As I begin to get ready to round up. Watch this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. See what the Bible says. Colossians 3, 15. It says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To which indeed you were called. Are you seeing it? <laughs> you are called to the peace of Christ. He said, now, let that peace of Christ, because it's not your peace, it's Christ. He said, let it flow. Give it opportunity to flow through you. Give it a doorway for that peace to flow through you like a river. Let, let it flow. Let it rule in your heart. You, you know, let it ooze from you. Let the peace of Christ, not you, you can't have that's why the world does not have peace because nobody can have peace except by Christ so the peace is not yours it is given to you by Christ Jesus is your peace so he's saying allow me to flow through you allow me to demonstrate my kindness through you allow me to show my goodness through you allow me to show my mercy through you allow me to show my love through you are you seeing him look once you allow Christ you will project peace by all means. <clears throat> By all means. Once you allow Christ, <clears throat> you will project peace. And that is by all means. <clears throat> because <laughs> he said, look, we will fight this thing to the end. We will settle this thing. I will not agree. And this one to say, I will not agree. No, 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 no. You can't tell me that. We, this thing, we will drag even if you are the one that is right. Just accept the wrong for the sake of peace. Be the peacemaker. Because any time there is bitterness, envy, strife in a place, the Bible says that wisdom is not from above. It's not from God. It is sensual. Somebody's mind is playing out. And he said it is demonic. It is satanic. The devil is behind it. He says, such wisdom is not from above. He said, for the wisdom that is from above is, first of all, peaceful. Ah, yeah. Easy to be entreated. It can be approached. Are you seeing that? Don't, don't stop being a warrior. You know, this Nigerian 
prayer warrior, warrior mentality has destroyed so many things. It has ruined so many lives. It has crippled so many destinies. And it has destroyed a lot of opportunity. Good opportunity that so many people have enjoyed. That they put it up in the book of James. <clears throat> Is it J I think it's James or, or Peter, one of them. You know? It's, I'm telling you. He said this wisdom is not, is not of God. It's not descend from above. It's sensual. Look at it. He said, but the wisdom that is from above. No, let's move to verse, uh, I think verse 15. Let's see from verse 15. It's very important. <coughs> move up, please. Move up. Uh, to verse 13. Let's see. Because I want everybody to see this. Watch this. He said, who is a wise man? God is asking questions. Who is wise among you? And endued with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation. The word conversation means behavior, character. If you say you are wise, and you are very wise, you are the one that is wise. Eh? You are wise. He said, we will see it in your character. now. We will see it in the way you are behaving. We will see it in the way you are behaving. <laughs> he said, he said let, let him show out of a good behavior or character, conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. Watch you. Verse 14. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please. He said, but if you have bitter envy and strife, always quarreling in your hearts, he said, glory not and lie not against the truth. You are not operating by the truth at all. You are just being religious. You are not living the life of Christ. Look at verse 15. Go on, verse 15. <clears throat> verse 15. He said, this wisdom descended not from above. That's not the wisdom of God. He said, but it is earthly, sensual. And look at the person behind it. It's devil. An evil spirit is behind such a wisdom. Every time you are always quarreling. Always bitter. Always angry. Why? Who gave you commissioner? Of anger, of bitterness. Who? Who employed you? Next verse. Oh, glory be to God. Look at the next verse. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 16. He said, For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Any time there is envy and strife, eh? you can't live peacefully. Always quarreling. <clears throat> you are so you are you are always angry. Why are you always angry? The fact that you are always angry is the reason the devil shows up to manipulate you, use you as an instrument to accomplish his own works, his own tasks, his own goal. Look at, look at the next verse. Verse 17 now says, thank you Lord Jesus. Look at verse 17. He said, but the wisdom that is from above is first of all pure. The wisdom that is from God is first of all pure. But look at the display of that pureness of that wisdom. He said, then, peaceable. Woo! Very peaceful. It is powered in peace. Peace. You say you are wise, then let's see how peaceful you are. Your wisdom, the, the, the usefulness of your wisdom the blessedness of your wisdom is made reveal to the level of peace you allow to flow through you. The blessedness of your wisdom <laughs> is revealed to the degree or the level you allow peace to flow through you. Be a peacemaker. That you are a peacemaker, you are a wise person. Very wise. He said the wisdom that is from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Glory be to God in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So many people are going to church, but they don't have peace. They don't have peace in their family. 
They don't have peace in their marriage. They don't have peace in their job. They don't have peace in their working place. They don't have peace of mind. Their mind, peace is absent in their mind. Yet they go to church. Yet they sing praises. Yet they do fasting, 21 days fasting. Yet they pray. Early, more, early in the morning, they have gone to, you know, to one mountain or to one corner to go and pray. Pray, 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 pray. Yet you don't have peace. You don't have peace. Wake up. The Bible said, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from among the dead. He said, And Christ shall give thee light. Wake up, wake up, wake up. You need to begin to surrender, respond to the peace of God inside you. That is how you will enjoy the, your life in Christ. Look at this. <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Let me get ready to close. God punish the devil. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. I'm sure somebody is blessed here. Because even me myself, I'm heavily blessed. Woo, glory be to God. In First Corinthians chapter, uh, 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 what again, say? Chapter 14, verse 33. Can they put it up, please? Let's close with that verse. Let me just give you this one more. Watch this. He said, for God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. He said, but of peace. Hallelujah. As in all churches of the saints. So don't tell me in your own church, you are not a man of peace. He said, I'm not a man of peace. I'm a man of war. I'm a fight. That guy is a nuisance. He's not born again. He's not of God. The Bible said, this same teaching, this doctrine, this belief is for all the churches of the saints. Any church what, that is the church of God, peace. Peace must be their watchword. Peace must be their character. So when a man say he's not a man of peace, he's not born again. He's not of God. The devil is speaking through him. It is the devil. He say I'm 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 in Daboski. I'm Bahosia. I'm I'm a man of war. I'm not a man of peace. He's a man of war. That's what he call himself. A man of war. He say he's not a man of peace. He's not. That means he's not of God. That person is not of God. I say it without apology. And I mean it. Because I need to wake up some people with this reality. Look at it. He said, God is not the God of confusion, but of peace. He said, this, this doctrine is in all the churches of the saints. So you can't say, our own church is a church of peace. Then, this, one, this was our own church, not a church of peace. So, ah, we will fight. Our church is a, is a battling church. We battle. We war. He said, that is not a doctrine to be believed because the, the doctrine to be believed as a teaching, as a truth in the body of Christ for all churches is peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's peace. In every church, peace. In every church, in every church, it's peace. Peace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Assemblies of God, Nigeria, peace in the name of Jesus. Assem I don't know why this just came up in my spirit. I think Holy Ghost is trying to speak to somebody in Assemblies of God. Assemblies of God, Nigeria. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in Jesus' name. I beg you. Assemblies of God, Nigeria. Peace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Look at the Assemblies of God. is broken into different pieces. Because they've carried themselves to different church, uh, 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 different courts. And they've locked down themselves, waiting for judges, you know, unbelievers, sitting in the seat of judgment. Over the church of God. Ah! Assemblies of God. Uh, uh, Assemblies of God church in Nigeria. Your leaderships are babies. You all are babies. You are babies. To go before the court of law. To go before a judge that is not a, a, a Muslim. An unbeliever. An idol worshiper. And then you carry yourself. As leaders in the body of Christ. And sit down there to begin to adjudicate to begin to judge over you haven't you heard the bible said we shall judge angels and that we will judge this world everybody who is not born again we are the one that is going to judge them when jesus comes back you are not carrying yourself to them to judge you shame on you assemblies of god uh, of god church leaders in nigeria shame on all of you who is the peacemaker among you you mean there's no peacemaker Nobody to make peace. <clears throat> Nobody to make peace among you. You can't step down for each other. Because 
When will you respond to my spirit? Say of the Lord. Respond. 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 The spirit of God is nudging some of you to walk the path of peace. Stop hardening your heart. Stop it. Stop hardening your heart. The Bible said, do not harden your heart like in the days of provocation in Hebrews chapter 2. When many of them died in the wilderness. Don't do that. Open your heart and respond. Jesus is at the door of your heart knocking. He's knocking through me. For one hour now, he's been knocking. Please, don't, don't harden your heart. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Open your heart and, and receive this truth. In which, whichever area, wherever you are, whatever state this truth has come to you, I beg you in Jesus' name, accept this truth, this gospel truth. Accept it and it is well with you. May the peace of God be with your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to be with your spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. You know, we will not close without asking you to give. So I'm going to ask you to give. In this, our fellowship, as we have taught, the Bible said in Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, that if a man has taught you the truth of the word of God, or the word of God, you should communicate back your substance. So I'm going to ask you to take up an offering, tithe, seed faith, whatever it is you want to call it. Just give. Take up an offering. Use your phone and send to transfer to Zenit Bank, 1001-488-167. Zenith Bank, 1001-488-167. Uh, and if you want to send me a message on WhatsApp, please use my plus 234-803-078-006. You know, I trust God that the peace of God is reigning in your house, in your family, in your community, in your working place. In your life, in your heart, in your mind, in the name of Jesus, in your church, in the department where you are in that church, in Jesus' name, amen. I love you and God bless you in the name of Jesus. I'm so grateful to God that Jesus has given me another opportunity to be a blessing to my generation by teaching the consciousness of Jesus Christ. All right, until I see you in the next episode, you know, this is AVJ, Apostle Victor James, and I am Sign it out. God bless you. Bye-bye.